Initially, it was uh, meant to be an adults workshop and reach college students, uh, but we opened it up to the East Long Meadow High School community as well because of the proximity to the library. And when I showed up the first day, it was all teenagers, and so it became the Teen Creative Writing Workshop. It's been amazing. It's been so much fun. Um, the first couple of workshops were uh, a little bit of a struggle. Um, I had never really worked with kids before. I had tutored college students, but um, uh, I had never worked with anyone uh, under 18. So um, there was a bit of a learning curve um, uh, for both of us, uh, for, for both the students and myself. It was definitely a pleasant surprise how advanced they were right off the bat. They were uh, doing work that would um, that would be very successful in a, a four-year college creative writing course. Um, they were also very supportive of one another, so um, things I thought I would have to explain and maybe even take a, 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 an instructional approach on like a, a, a constructive criticism. Um, they just knew what they were doing. Um, I found that other than things like silliness that we had to accommodate for and also um, taking their interests into account, um, the sorts of media uh, they absorb. Um, the age was largely arbitrary. Um, we've started to teach adult writers now and our teen writers are actually more advanced than our adult writers. I was honestly like flabbergasted by how advanced these students were. I mean, coming into a workshop full of, you know, people who are around 14, 15 years of age, you don't expect to see the types of writing levels that you're being exposed to in college. And in some cases, they were even more advanced than what I did see in college. So it was just amazing to see how much that skill had developed in such a short period of time. And I just remember saying to the students, probably on multiple occasions, like, wow, I was like not even close to this good when I was your age. This is incredible. I think that it was really important that a lot of us started writing like right away whenever we write when we could. Like we've all been writing for forever probably and we just all love it so much that it's a skill that's, even though we are in fact very young, we, it's been in development for quite some time regardless, just because we've been doing it for so long. So that really helps too. I've had a lot of motivation from um, my mentors and peers and this workshop in general to keep writing and to edit my writing and all of that. And I, my story that I'm writing right now has come so far just from the support that I've gotten from this group and I never probably would even have continued writing the story had I not joined this group. Had my dad, excuse me, had my dad not told me to join this group. <laughs> yeah. And so initially I, you know, I'm not great with like being updated on things and I didn't know it existed. My dad is the one that like reads the news and stuff like that. So he Got saw it. the flyer for it or whatever the, I forget how exactly it was communicated on their website, something like that. Yeah. And he said, oh, you should sign up for this. You might really enjoy it. And I said, sure, why not? I, I did walk through this door on my own accord. I took the <laughs> risk, so, uh, but here I am still. And I've loved coming here, so. There's mm -hmm. this exercise where Basically, you go around and there's categories and everyone gives a word, whatever word they feel like matches the category. And then I go around again and everyone gets to pick any word they want. And then you take those words and you have to write a story using all of them and it gets just amazing. Like it's like instant creative thought, like just go and you write and you have to, it's like you have to develop your plot, you have to develop your characters and it's all like just off the bat, see what you can do and we get some really hilarious stories that we just have a lot of fun with them, so yeah. <laughs> now you told me you're going to school for education. I am, yeah. So do you envision yourself teaching writing? Uh, yeah, I actually want to go into English, so uh, and and probably this age too. I, I, wanna, I think I want to work with teenagers too. So I We've created quite the dynamic um, in this, in this yeah. workshop and even though either one of us has the knowledge and skills to teach on their own this kind of material, the workshop is, I think is just so much better and stronger with us as a team. Um, 
because we're taking different skill sets, because mm -hmm. we're different writers too. The way we write is incredibly different from each other. So we're taking those aspects and kind of combining them as a joined force as well. Mm -hmm. And even just the dynamic of the two sisters, like it seems to really- The banter. <laughs> put yeah. the class at the ease. Heckling. Mm -hmm. Like the students are entertained mm -hmm. and feel more comfortable when they see us bantering back and forth mm -hmm. in kind of a jovial way and being casual with each other and kind of playing jokes on each other. It makes them more at ease. Mm -hmm. And it, it gives them a more comforting environment than being in a classroom where you just have one teacher just kind of at the front and just lecturing. It's more interactive and it's it's just a safer space, I think, for them, which is yeah. definitely something that the younger writers need. Mm -hmm. Things are a lot more elastic in here when we have two opinions kind of bouncing off of each other. Mm -hmm. You get a lot more creativity and a lot more options coming from that. And I definitely, having experienced the worlds of both, know that it has been much beneficial to have both of them here. And if any one of them ever missed a meeting or something, it was always not the same. Like it was visibly not the same and, and we did not have as good meetings unless they're the, the, only, the best ones were when they're both here. So and if you asked a million people to write a prompt to something, every single prompt will be different because there's no answer. So the, the having more than one person contributing, it's just, it's so helpful to get more than one opinion on something because sometimes you might share something and and Beth says, oh, that was great. I love how that was written. And Jen's like, I think it could have maybe done better this way. And sometimes it's the other way around. Yeah. And so, and then you, then it's your decision to decide what do I want to do with that? Which opinion do I value more? I mean, you know, we don't want to play the you know, <laughs> favorites. The limit is 10. Um, and that's just because if you go too far and get too big of a group, then you really can't give the attention that's right. needed to each Absolutely. student. I mean, especially when workshopping is a, kind of a time intensive mm -hmm thing to do yeah. so yeah. that's why we have to limit it I think the group size also uh, matters because I think having this small closer group we get more opportunities to share our work and you also feel a lot more comfortable sharing mm -hmm. it when you're more familiar with everyone that's present and you know that they're going to be supportive and they're going to try to help you and that they're you're all friends you know once we, we all get together like that and it's just having the small group just makes it so nice and it's kind of like when you have small classes too those are just so much better than giant classes because you can have those personal connections you don't have otherwise most of the most of the people in fact I think everyone in here when we come in to share work every person before they read almost every time starts with a disclaimer of this isn't going to be good <laughs> they give a they give the disclaimer be ready for the so mm -hmm. there's there's you, you may be uh, thinking that it's typical for writers, especially young writers, to think that their work is amazing or that they're, it's, it's already perfect or that they don't have to edit it. And it's just the opposite of the truth. We are all so doubtful of our work and really need the criticism. Uh, really, that construction just helps so much. And we, we do actually have a lot of issues, inner issues that we have to work through with our own writing. A lot of it comes out in the writing too. So writing can be therapeutic. It's just, it's great for a lot of things. So, and this group is so helpful. It's like a catalyst for that, all of it. <laughs> the difficult part is that writers tend to keep to themselves and we have had a lot of difficulty um, fi reaching them because I at one point even put posters around the school that we were doing this and we didn't get anyone from the high school that came and I know there's more writers at the school so it's not that they you know a lot of people have scheduling conflicts stuff like that but a lot of it is just the the fear that that their work isn't going to be good enough or that they're not going to be liked for the work and and it's something that does it is difficult to get over that but we're, we're really welcoming here and, and we love ha having new submissions and it's really exciting when someone says oh I, I started writing something new or maybe they were in the middle of something before and and they left it on a cliffhanger and so now we're waiting for them to write the next piece and sometimes that's just a really great way to spend your week to think about what's n coming up next Saturday and and what people are going to share and what are they going to share and it's just a great experience to have to, to be able to be exposed to all those different things because you might get an idea for your own writing from someone else. So. We kind of already talked about the, the, the dual teachers. I think having two teachers in a writing class would be really, really helpful. Um, but also having um, more classes that are smaller in size would be really great and also having 
uh, more open formed lessons rather than things being write an essay on this prompt. I think that scares kids away because they don't like being told what to write. I know I don't. I hate being told what to write. I hate writing prompts because I don't like to conform to a specific thing. I like to be able to just write whatever I want. So it's great when you get the opportunity to be fluid with your own writing because you don't develop if you are forced to, into a box. And if everyone else is writing the same thing as you, you won't feel like your writing is special. So. Yeah. You know, to follow up on what he said, um, I think I would like to see um, more focus on creative writing. I mean, mm -hmm. most of the focus that you get in English classes, it's teaching you the five-paragraph essay. <laughs> oh, man, which they do away with <laughs> in college, so thanks for that. So learning the essay, learning persuasive writing, obviously learning spelling and grammar, which is important. But there's not a lot of focus on the creative side of writing. And sometimes that's the writing that really speaks to people, mm -hmm. especially in a kind of sensitive time like teenagehood when you're going through a lot of changes emotionally and physically. And sometimes the creative <laughs> writing... That's not very public school. Huh? That sounded very public school. Well, I have a psychology background. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Um, well, I, I totally concur uh, with both opinions, and to and to um, to build on that, um, in uh, at the college level, we learn theory and criticism, which is great, and it, it, it's such an important modality in creative writing because it informs uh, the constructive criticism we do here. But oftentimes, they don't teach you how to translate that to your craft. So that's something missing. Um, I think at the high school level as well, I think theory and criticism as a creative construct should be taught. But another thing I'd, I, I'd like to see more of is um, just more trust and transparency. Um, one of our biggest priorities is to create a, a safe, supportive space. And a big part of that is um, myself and Beth admitting fallibility. Mm. We, mm -hmm. have a, um, we have this thing we call the chopping block, <laughs> where <laughs> we bring in our own work and we say, tear it apart. We're not going to ask you to do anything that we won't do. Mm. And some of them approach that with far too much enthusiasm. <laughs> And some of them are a little bit hesitant, like, ooh, can I, can I really critique the teacher? Yes, you can. We want you to. Um, one of the things uh, we're teaching here is how to challenge authority in a respectful, constructive way. You know, thinking uh, independently about your own work. We're teaching intellectual and creative autonomy, but we're also teaching uh, them to work collaboratively. Uh, to support one another. And, and all of them have befriended each other. I've never had to explain constructive criticism once. Um, it's it's such, a, such a supportive and open space where everybody is, is totally transparent and, and that begins with trust. So I'd like to see more of that at the high school level, um, more teachers being fallible, admitting their humanity. We're not always right. I make mistakes all the time. My students are now comfortable enough to correct me or, in his case, make fun of me. <laughs> but, but. We all make fun of each other. That's the fun. That's, you know, you have to be able to fair. take, you know, take your hits and and get up from them and, and we all make mistakes in here and that's the that's just the reality of it we're all human and that's we we grow as humans by making mistakes so but to build on that i mean that that's a really good point that the high school experience unfortunately a lot of it isn't really preparing you for what you're going to be met with when you walk out of those doors, when you graduate, it, there's just so much missing from that experience. And this is definitely part of it, is being able to challenge what is being put forth to you as, you know, factual. Some things are not cut and dry. There's, they're not black and white, but they are so often presented in that way so that the kids aren't getting the opportunity to be like, well, wait, I think maybe we can approach it this way. Maybe we can see it that way. So we're trying to give them an opportunity to enhance a skill set that really is kind of being left in the dust in the, in the school system 
because that skill set is so integral to once you get out there, uh, either to college or into the work field, and you are going to be met with those challenges on a regular basis. I think at the high school level, there's this tendency to conflate uh, having a different opinion or a different approach with failure. And that's a mindset that we're, we're, we're confronting here in this classroom. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to be able to take uh, several advanced placement courses. Um, as a junior, I took uh, AP English language and then I took AP English literature as a senior and those were those classes were really the beginning of like get getting that new exposure having you know about 15 kids in a class and having really advanced discussions on a really advanced material learning things about each other and our teacher and our teacher learning things from us that's really the experience that has solidified my desire to become a teacher and I want to I want to be able to have that experience on the other end someday too. I think that to a certain extent uh, we're kind of coddling kids um, and, and it's not to say that we shouldn't be sensitive to Correct. their needs and to their it's feelings definitely ways. but it, it, it's, a, it's a separate entity really. We need to prepare them for what they're going to come across and we should be preparing them early. We shouldn't be like, okay, now that you're going into the world, now let's prepare you. <laughs> well, that's a little little late. They're already getting into it. So people are going out into the world of college or the work world just missing so many core skill sets. Mm -hmm. And then you see stuff in the news about, you know, uh, the millennial generation and well I guess there's just millennials now there's nothing else yet so the millennial generation being lazy um, not wanting to find work there's so many of these very negative stereotypes about the millennial generation which it's being perpetuated by them not being prepared for that life so we can't expect them to get out there and find a productive job and be a productive member of a society when we haven't given them the skill set to go out and do that. They're floundering. They don't know what to do. They need guidance. And some of them are lucky enough to have, you know, parents or mentors who can kind of, you know, show them the way, but a lot of them aren't. There's, you know, something missing in their home life and school is not doing what they can to fill that gap so they're going out there and they don't know what to do so no it's not laziness it's not a lack of interest it's not a lack of motivation it's just not knowing and not having the skills to do it and when you see entry-level positions that say two to five years of experience well that can also kind of add to that anxiety of oh man what did I do wrong what didn't I do so <laughs> that's a I very strong opinion. That, but. <laughs> um, a lot of the, where a lot of the problem arises from our uh, heavy focus on grades and numbers. Mm -hmm. um, as we progress through school, we're kind of just told to like get A's and and you know do well in your classes. And and a lot of the curriculums that we are forced through are uh, allow very little room for any kind of flexibility or creativity. Mm -hmm. And so when you're told exactly what to do for a decade, then you stop learning how to think and there are classes that you are uh, that I was lucky enough to take I took I decided for some reason to take advanced placement calculus this past <laughs> year uh, even though I have no I have no interest in math and and I'm not going to do it use math in my career but I just decided I was going to challenge myself I wanted to take a higher level class and see if I could do it and that class just I was had just such an amazing teacher and I, it really just taught me how to think and even if I'm not going to be using that exact algorithm again it's the flexibility that you develop when you learn how to do something and and you see it applied in a new way and you can take all the skills you've learned and put them together that's it's almost like some a magic that you can just pull it together and, and make something out of it and it's just it's a really great feeling when when you can create something that wasn't there before and and, and discover something about yourself in the process that's just really cool so. I think when you remove creativity from education too you're removing uh, a fundamental tool in becoming your own advocate um, because if you can't 
you know, express yourself, if you can't communicate the facts effectively, how are you going to advocate for yourself? Mm -hmm. Or for others who need your advocacy. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And in my AP Lit class, um, Mr. McVetty, who was the teacher, he would tell us all the time, he said, he, grades don't matter. He said, stop caring about your grades. You guys are all going to do fine and we're all supportive in here. And he really emphasized that a lot, that we should stop even worrying about what, because the common phrase in our, in our class, everyone would always say, see a grade every time he would present an essay of some kind or anything that we would be graded. Is this graded? Is this graded? We'd always want to know if it was graded or not. So we kind of developed the skill to not want or worry about the uh, grade and worry about the work and, and what's gonna, what are we getting out of it personally rather than the uh, letter that we get at the end. I, I think, too, if you're going to go into literature, um, the carrot stick model is not going to work. The motivation is going to have to come from within. Mm -hmm. um, and grades are a carrot stick mm -hmm. model Absolutely. that are, it's very antiquated. Um, yeah. uh, teaching the kids how to motivate themselves, how to, how to find the passion and how to mm -hmm. sustain the passion um, is essential because when they go out into the world and they try to publish, they're going to get, you know, a hundred rejection letters for every one maybe if that right if that if they're lucky so they have to be able to maintain that momentum it, it has to be an internal motivation Ex exterior motivation is is not going to right. work and that's true of a lot of things you do i mean mm -hmm. that's true of like when you get out into the work work field too like a lot of Keeping yourself going in your job is about self-motivation because you're not getting it from what's around you, not typically anyway. Or you're getting right. a lot of stick and very little carrot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty true. So, I mean, it's a skill set that it's, it's important in multiple ways. It's important to writing, absolutely, mm -hmm. but it's important to the life that you're going to lead in general. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess in that sense you can say that... Uh, we're writing, a preparatory writing, <laughs> writing workshops aren't just about developing you as a writer. It's about developing you as a person. Mm -hmm. Well, Campbell, uh, in his Hero of a Thousand Faces, talks about the monomyth and says we're all on a hero's journey. Every narrative is the hero's journey. So when we talk about writing, we're talking about life. We're talking about every conceivable human experience. Mm -hmm.